Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. Once I started seeing success and started getting like confidence in myself as you know, a business owner and running a business and stuff, completely out the window. No chance I was going to law school after that. Today, I'm chatting with Ross Kleinman, entrepreneur and founder of the Kingswood Collection. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his burn board offers a low-impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Blue Door Financial. Blue Door Financial will help you save money and reduce taxes to live a fuller financial life. To learn more, visit Blue Door Financial online at bludoorfinancial.com. That's bludoorfinancial.com. What's up, podcast? Episode 113 of the On The Stacks podcast here in the Blue Door studio. Welcome to the show, Ross. How you doing? Good, man. Super stoked to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. This is awesome. You're like right down the road. Yeah, that was super... New neighbor. Su- dude, super close. When I was on my way over here, I didn't even realize it said like three minutes down the road. I was like, okay, that's perfect. Love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so you're back in the area and you're doing some really cool things. You've been an entrepreneur for, well, geez, since you've, from what I understand, since you were seven years old, selling, selling buying Slow and selling kid. sports cards. Yeah, no. When I, I mean, when I was little... Um, I don't even know how I got into it. Could have been a family member or something, but I just love sports cars. My mom used to take me to the uh, all the shows about the Wyoming Valley Mall, and I definitely got a sense for you know the entrepreneurial bug from that. You know, seeing and doing deals and all these other things. It was a uh, it was pretty eye opening, and immediately I like fell in love with the uh, the whole concept of like you know selling things and buying things and having cool items and you know building collections of cool things and stuff like that. It's uh, it's always been something that I love doing. So, so sports cards, like that was like your first thing. Yeah, sports cards. I did like memorabilia too. I have some cool stuff, but yeah, no, I love doing sports cards. There's like, I don't know if it was like the graphic art or if it was, you know, because I was crazy about sports, but probably a combination of it all. But yeah, man, I loved it when I was. So you younger. are, so you are crazy about sports. Oh yeah, I mean, I love sports. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So As you can see, I'm wearing a um, 1980 the, Olympic shirt. So yeah, no, big <laughs> big sports guy for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And got and got the Eagles hat too. The Eagles hat in the middle. Yeah. Hell yeah, you have yeah. to have it. Yeah. Um, all right, man. So all right, so seven years old, you're selling sports cards. You know, take me a little bit. You know, let's um, kind of kind of go through a little bit. Like what you know, obviously throughout high school, I know you had mentioned to me previously in previous conversation that we had that you had maybe one or two other little startups. Yeah, as no, a kid. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, before Kingswood was created, um, we had a company called MKB with a couple of my buddies. Um, and basically what we did was we would buy wholesale iPhone chargers from China, pre- order them over here, like thousands of them. These boxes that would show up to my parents' garage would be <laughs> massive. Like they definitely saw those like, what is he doing? And we would sit down. It would be the uh, like the cardboard packaging, the plastic, the chargers, everything separate. Um, there was four of us. We would sit down and just start separating them, sold them on eBay, and it was so you great. Had to, you had to like repackage all of it. You, they, every single piece came separate from each other, and you literally had to. It was like the cardboard. You put everything in the plastic like holder, slide it in there, repackage it, put a little sticker on it. It's cool. I actually kept. I found one like a couple weeks ago. I have it framed in my room down in uh, Philadelphia. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So so wait. So what? Like, why did you do that? Like, why did you guys start that specifically? Like. So one of our buddies was actually doing it and absolutely crushing it. He's one of the people, my buddy Mike Gallus, he's he's somebody who got me selling on eBay and doing things like that early on, year or two before Kingswood. 
But it's crazy because when we actually started Kingswood my junior year of um, high school, which was 2013, it was with Mike Gallus and my friend uh, Roy Mullen. Everyone calls him Burns. The uh, three of us started in Mike's basement, which is uh, Kingswood Drive is where he lives. So So that's where 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 Kingswood's from. The name. Yeah. Yeah, And we fell in love with it. Like the name was just perfect because we sat for like days. We were like, what are we going to name this thing? And everything we came up with was like not good at all not good <laughs> and at all. and it was all. right in front of you the whole time it was time. right in front of us the whole time and it's perfect like kingswood it the letters look cool together it sounds good like we love it everything's perfect with it all right so so you're hustling chargers selling selling things on ebay were you selling other things too or just primarily it was those chargers the chargers were like really good for us and there was like a lot of competition online with it so we got to like learn little things you know going through that process and even like dealing with foreign manufacturers i mean we were i don't even know if we had our license yet and we were you know ordering things from china and importing them and selling them here it was pretty intense looking back on it but yeah no we had a blast doing it too we had so much fun and you guys just like figured this out on your own yeah yeah we had some help from our buddy mike but yeah no basically we just started doing it and just kept going with it and it was great and then fast forward um i don't know maybe eight months we started you know getting a little sick of it and you know blah 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 so we kind of dissolved it but i continued to sell stuff online so you know i would go up to the thrift stores and you know um find different things i could flip or you know whatnot clean out my closet a hundred times you know things like that and then fast forward to 2013 you know me mike and rory are talking we're like okay well you know let's pull together a couple shekels and you know see what we could do with it um unfortunately after a couple weeks they got kind of sick of it which i don't blame them listing stuff constantly on ebay and sending out packages it's extremely tedious (laughs) yeah Yeah, no it could could be really annoying so we figured out you know how much each person owed you know and then we uh separated from there but i just kept doing it did all throughout high school throughout college i would sell clothes on my room you know we'd have parties people would come up and do shopping in the middle or weekends we would have you know buddies bring their buddies over it was a lot of fun wow all right so so where so you were down in philly right we're down in philly i went to temple i was an entrepreneurship and innovation major um most fun four years um loved temple absolutely loved temple the um, entrepreneurship program was great had a ton of super super cool professors. Yeah, tell me about it. So entrepreneurship and innovation, like what right. did, what did, what does all that mean? So essentially, a good chunk of the classes were idea generating, which I didn't think was the best way to go about teaching certain things, but they were great. I learned a lot of things from it. They ended up being you know really good. And then there was a lot of you know business organization stuff, startup stuff, how to raise money, how to talk to people, how to do certain things like that. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of cool little skills and I still stay in touch with some of my professors. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. No, I was really glad, um, with my experience at Temple. Yeah. By the way, I, we, everyone's probably looking at this with this wonderful candle right now, yeah, which the, smells really good. The blueberry pancakes. Yeah, what's, Shout yeah, what's out up? to, uh, <laughs> Corba candles. Um, yeah, she, she whipped these up for us. We have a vanilla bourbon and a blueberry pancake. Hopefully going to be hitting our website sometime soon. By the time this comes out, it'll probably they'll probably already be out. Probably be sold out. Probably be sold out. If fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But yeah, no. I mean, we have the um, blueberry pancake going and it smells fantastic. The whole room right now, it's... Yeah, it's the, yeah. Best, it's the best it's ever smelled in here, I think. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, I've, I don't have any reference for it, but yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. This thing, not, that this smelled, not that it smelled bad. No, here, definitely not. Just, definitely yeah, not. Yeah. But that just smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, no. She does amazing work. She does like candles and, you know, repurposed cans and jars and different things and really crushed it. Plus, I love supporting any um, any friend and any small business like that. You know, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, we definitely. try we try and do as much work with, you know, certain friends that, you know, do, do certain things. We have this one buddy, uh, Jack McGrath. He goes by Gator. He does art. Um, we just put like 10 pieces up. I just saw you post and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's awesome. The colors, the designs, everything. He's just like an extremely, extremely talented artist. So we try to, you know, bring a lot of cool things together like that, you know, utilize our friends. Super cool. Definitely. All right. So, so you're down there in Philly. You're, you're doing your, you started the Kingswood thing before. Yeah. Before that. Yeah. So I went into college having Kingswood. I've had a ton of help from my buddies throughout, but yeah, no, I would be, you know, I would be studying for a test and then packaging up, you know, t-shirts and send them out. So that's what you did. So you did, you did the school and then you're, and then you're doing, doing Kingswood evenings. And then, and then yes, yeah, definitely. Um, my, uh, college schedule was always, I like set up so I could sleep in. 
And then basically what I would do was I would, you know, have my classes, come back, do whatever work I had to do, an hour or two of Kingswood stuff, and then, you know, go meet up with friends or whatever. I'm done. And finding that balance was definitely super, super tough, especially with so many, you know, distractions in college and stuff like that. But I enjoyed, you know, I enjoy what I do. So it's fun. You know, it's not like it was, it was work. It's, you know, I'm not doing, yeah. you know, exactly. Plus you're making a couple bucks. I, making I a imagine. couple of bucks for sure. Yeah. No, we were, we were living all right in college. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's cool. All right. So like what exactly is Kingswood? Okay. So Kingswood collection is essentially my curation of vintage clothes, art, furniture, vinyl records, um, basically anything that we find cool. So, you know, even posters, and a lot of it's, you know, based around sports, music, you know, certain things that I've loved forever. So I kind of combine, you know, my love of history and music and movies and everything and design into this, um, this teepee that we sell all, you know, we sell all these cool things and we hold all these, you know, um, you know, different kind of collaborations and we just do a lot of cool different, um, you know, different stuff. But at our core, we sell vintage clothes. So that's, that's what we do. We sell vintage clothes. So, so where, where do you, where do you get this stuff? So that's always the question everybody asks. So basically after doing it for so long, you know, I've been doing this since early high school, even before Kingswood was started, I would, you know, collecting clothes and stuff. So over the years we've developed, you know, a d- bunch of different routes and stuff that we do it. At first it was just going straight to thrift stores and, you know, finding cool things on the racks or whatnot. Um, a lot of, you know, hunting on eBay late night, a lot of, you know, um, storage units, just like anything we could find that, you know, might be elite. It's like a treasure hunt. It's super <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, the full time treasure, the hunt. hunt to find everything is super, super fun. Yeah. It's like I'm a, uh, Nick Cage in national or, um, yeah. Why well, can't I think of it? Yeah. National Nas- treasure. Yeah, national national tre- treasure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, all right. So, so do you got any crazy stories? Like you, you mentioned like, um, uh, storage units and like just going anywhere and everywhere. Like, so yeah. So basically from, you know, I've been in Philly the past seven years. I'm still in Philly. I live between Philly and here. But basically from, you know, doing it so much in Philly, I've seen some crazy, crazy things. Some like drug paraphernalia, um, you know, different, you know, different things that, you know, you, yeah, you don't you don't want to, you know, be feeling in the pockets. and <laughs> Some sketchy things. Yeah, exactly. Um, seen fights in thrift stores. I've been in neighborhoods that were, you know, pretty tough. But it was, you know, everything's awesome. You know, it, the the whole hunt, you know, it's 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 fun. It's yeah. fun. I really, really enjoy it. And I'm super stoked that I get to do it as a job. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of right? cool. Yeah, definitely. D- did you did you think that you'd you'd be doing this? I always thought I was gonna be a lawyer. I come from a family with a bunch of lawyers, and I was until maybe you know mid high school, end of high school. I thought eventually I'd you know make my way to it. But um, once I started seeing success and started getting like confidence in myself as you know a business owner and running a business and stuff completely out the window no chance i was going to law school after that um plus i watched my sister study and go through you know law school prep and the lsats and everything and that was also a big no and way you said screw that absolutely there is no <laughs> way in hell that i'm going to be doing that so shout out to her for going through that and letting me you know watch her and know yeah. that that was not for me yeah she was like the guinea pig for, yeah no exactly for you to figure exactly, yourself out exactly and she crushes it too yeah yeah, yeah. all right so so you decide Lawyer things not for me. Not for me. No. And not like, for me. And like, at what point did you realize, like, hey, like this is like, I'm gonna really do this. Early in college, um, we had one Black Friday slash Christmas season that I couldn't keep up with um, orders. I couldn't keep inventory and in fast enough, and I started getting, um, I started getting pr- like things would sell at prices that I was a little in awe that they would sell at. So then I started saying, okay, well, I think this might be a real thing. So my game plan was continue through college. As long as I enjoy it, I'm still doing well in school and, you know, it's, it continues to grow. Then we'll see what happens with it. And luckily everything continued to grow. Everything went smooth. And when I graduated college, I knew exactly I'm continuing, not even looking for a job, nothing. That was Um, it. You just knew. That was it. No, I I absolutely knew that that was, that's what I was going to do. So, so, all right. So give me an example. So you mentioned, you said, you know, some items selling for maybe more than you anticipated. Like, give me an example. Like what was the item? And like, just give me any, any random example. For sure. So early on I had these, these old, um, Jordan ones. And at one time they were a couple hundred bucks, maybe, you know, around a thousand bucks. So we had one laying around one Christmas season. I decided to take it off my shelf. I use it as a display. It was a pretty cool display in my room. 
and we auctioned in and went for like double what I thought it was going to go for. And then we had a couple of t-shirts around that Christmas season too, that sold for way more. Cause we would do, put them in eBay auctions, you know, certain things that I didn't know exactly how to price. Cause you don't want to overprice and have, you know, people look at him and be like, Oh, this guy's, you know, charging an arm and a leg and you don't want to underprice because then, you know, you might miss out on, you know, so basically for things like that early on before we really got pricing down, we would just put them in eBay auctions and that last 15 minutes we would sit around and watch things go and a blast. It's Absolutely crazy. fun. Yeah. No. So we, um, we realized that, um, it was definitely a possibility and even certain things that were, you know, just old Penn state crew necks, which is something we always have or old Notre Dame sweatshirts or, you know, things of that sort, Eagle stuff that slowly started to get more attention you slowly, because one of the big things with selling vintage clothes is essentially you're selling pre-owned clothes. So you get the, uh, what do you mean you're selling used clothing sort of thing, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, and then th- throughout the years, it's really, really mellowed down and people are really starting to to bite to bite it because there's always been vintage clothes you know if you watch you know if you watch Seinfeld there's an episode where they're selling you know his old cabana wear but basically (laughs) like you know it's been around forever even in the 60s and 70s you could you know find a vintage store and they would sell you know colonial stuff or whatnot so it's always been a thing but it's just I think I think now people are starting to catch on especially all the environmental benefits that comes with it and you know people are really really into that right now so there's just a lot of things that you know really make it appealing and is growing, you know, our customer base and people that are into it and like the community as a whole, which has been, cause I've been doing this forever. But it's been really, really cool to see, you know, all the growth and everything. Yeah. So how old are you? I'm 25. And how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it since I'd say like 2011 or so. So I mean, and before that sports card. So I'd say I was, you know, I've been doing business since seven Your or whole eight. Life. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. Wow. All right, so so you sell you sell online. Like, where specifically do you sell? So basically, um, besides eBay, yeah. So it's eBay. We have our website kingswoodcollection.com, and then we also have a really big following on Depop. And for people who don't know what Depop is, essentially, it's you know an eBay, Etsy, Poshmark kind of collaboration, but it's only for clothes, and it's basically has a younger audience for it. And um, so they were UK based until, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, Um, maybe four or five years ago, we started using it um, and we've just grown with their platform. Fast forward today, they just got bought by Etsy for a couple billion dollars. Um, And we have it since we have a huge following, the people of Depop um, have taken care of us super well. Um, They promote us. They they. If there's any sort of issue, they get back to me in 10 minutes. They're awesome. So we, um, we've we been using using that for years. And um, in the future, we're trying to get more into our website a bit more because a lot of our traffic and everything comes through Depop. But it leads from Depop to our website, right? So if we have an order on Depop, we'll include some stickers or a business card or something. And then I'll either have our website or our Instagram. So it'll flow into that sort of. Um, but yeah, no, Depop has been awesome for us. We love it. You just moved in just recently into right. a space on Pennsylvania Ave here Absolutely. in Wilkes-Barre. So tell me how that came about and why did you why did you move the operation to where you did? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so basically, I have been wanting to make some sort of move with Kingswood in terms of a storefront or some sort of warehouse or facility for a long time. And basically, from being in the area for so long and my family being here for so long, there's so many doing things around here is so much easier and, you know, networking is so much easier because you already know so many people and the people, you know, you don't know, they know the people that you do know. Everybody knows each (laughs) other around here. So it's so nice to be able to, you know, work with everybody and do certain things. And although, you know, you could absolutely do that in Philly, it's just a little bit, for me, it was a little bit easier here. So basically we got the idea that, Hey, maybe we won't do a store in Philly. Maybe we'll you so know, you, do some so you sort thought of about doing a store for in a long, Philly. for a long time. Um, we looked at a ton of places. I live in Maniunk, which is, um, the Hoboken of Philadelphia, essentially. So we looked at a few places around there and then COVID hit and a few businesses, you know, started to go, go under. So when those places became available, we started looking more seriously um, we went as far as we signed a few letters of intent to certain places and ended up following through, um, which turned out to be a blessing. Yeah, but, totally. um, yeah, no, we were super close to doing something in Philly. I come back here, uh, to look at a warehouse space and the guy who was showing me it, 
was like, Hey, I have this other place you might be interested in. So I was like, okay, for sure. Um, so we go and look at it. As soon as I walk in, I was like, this is, this is absolutely it. Um, the whole, the old home of Axelrad. So, um, they're, you know, the coolest printing t-shirt, you know, everything around. And so being able to work with them and have them sort of as like the big brother to us early on has been super awesome. Plus the building is just incredible. The, the character it has from being, you know, over a hundred years old, a lot of the original floorboards and the ceiling panels and there, certain things like that, like the character of it's incredible. It's such an awesome building. In the back, there's a few of the original like big wooden doors and stuff too. So it's just, it's super cool and it just goes so well with what we do. It is cool. Yeah. No, it's yeah. such an awesome building. Yeah. And I, I've been there for, you know, Ross and I actually, we, we didn't even meet until like a couple months ago. Right. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Mark Dixon, by the shout way. Shout out to Mark Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Dixon is one of, one of introduced us. Absolutely. Um, but, um, but yeah, I came by and I, I mean, I, I knew I've been in the, in that building before when it was previously Axel right. had, but uh, no, it was looks cool. completely different. It looks completely, completely different. different. Yeah. 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 And it was just, it was cool to, you know, to see your space and get a tour and, you know, like ground level, like, you know, yeah. it's cool to see like, and, and you were, you were telling me a lot of the future plans of the building. Can you, can you share some of that? Now? Yeah, no, definitely. So the one thing that, um, we noticed as soon as we started, com- you know, moving back here. Um, and when I say we, it's, um, my buddy Connor McCarty works with me full time. Our friend Jackie Muser works with us too. Um, who they both absolutely crushed it and I could never have done what I, what we've accomplished in the last two or three months that we've been in there without them, they've been an absolute blessing to me. And, um, yeah, no, I couldn't thank them enough, but yeah, no. So, um, the one thing we noticed is that in the area, there kind of lacks a sort of fluidity with a lot of like the cooler and the creatives and, you know, certain things that don't get the limelight or don't have the money for the big storefronts. So one of the big things we want to do, since we have such a massive space, you know, we have, you know, close to 10,000 square feet and then outside spaces. So the one thing we want to do is start hosting events where basically, you know, we could bring all of these cool people from the area into one place and kind of create, you know, a sort of community and more of like a fluidity between, you know, all of these things. The, uh, the 900 building does an absolute stellar job at doing that. So we're kind of using that as like a blueprint sort of thing. Um, so we have in, in our warehouse, because we have such a massive space, I, um, we're renting out a part of it to one of my uh, closest friends, Josh Snell. And what he does What's up, is- Josh? He, Josh, save, Josh. Save the wave. Josh is one of the coolest people ever. And having him like helping us and being in there with us has been also an absolute blessing. Um, yeah, no. So like just everything getting set up has been awesome. Um, all these events that we want to do to bring all these people together are going to be super cool. There's a space we eventually want to, uh, try and start throwing concerts and just like things that we could, you know, bring people, you know, in one place, you know, that's not a bar, you know, something like that. Something, something where, you know, local artists could show off their things or people who, you know, make furniture or whatnot, you know, just like ways that people who do either side projects or smaller things like that could like come together and there could be more of like, you know, community with everybody around here. So speaking of like of the area, you know, like, like what, what is your vision for, you know, I'll say like Wooksbury. I know you and I have talked about this only like once or twice prior to coming yeah. on here, but you know, you mentioned a couple of things and I just, I, I want to give you, I want you to, you to give your take on like, you know, the, the, you know, what's up and coming just in the area in general. Yeah, no, absolutely. We have been a huge advocate. Almost everybody I talk to who, you know, is asking about Kingswood, we, we get into this. Basically, I think that there's so much potential for this area to have so many cool things and, you know, to do so many, you know, more unique things that cities do, you know, cities like Philadelphia and things like that do. And like I said before, there's already tons and tons of cool things around here, but just like the lack of everything coming together kind of, you know, diminishes it and doesn't really create as, you know, enough of a community where like everybody could, you know, use each other to thrive sort of. Um, but yeah, no, so there's a lot of cool things we want to do. You know, one of the things I've always wanted to do is always open up a restaurant. I always want to do things with cars. So basically with Kingswood, you know, at, at our core, we buy and resell things. So with that, we could essentially go in any, you know, any way we want. Um, for now, definitely we're sticking with vintage clothes and art and furniture and posters and all that fun stuff, but there's definitely a bunch of different, you know, different things we want to get into. Um, there's some super cool historical buildings around here. I've always wanted to do cool things with since I was a kid driving in, you know, backseat of my mom's car, looking at everything. 
Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of things in the area that I think could, you know, like I said, with a little bit of fluidity and everything, you know, the area could be pretty cool. Yeah. And so did you get like some ideas or things like, or or was there, was there stuff that you did down in Philadelphia, like in Manioc that like either events or just experiences that you had there? Like, was there, was there some ideas that you you took from there that you want to implement here? Absolutely. I mean, at, at the core, um, whenever we did sort sort of pop-ups, um, I had a buddy who had set up a bunch of them and, um, just, you know, like I said, bringing different people together into one place and, you know, having, you know, common things to, to share with each other, you know, really goes a long way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the absence of that, you know, kind of creates, you know, that it's, it, it has all these, you know, people who, if they're doing things together, you know, it could be incredible and, you know, not having that and just having them, you know, stand on their own, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, so yeah, so basically, you know, we just want to, you know, bring it all together and, you know, help other, you know, smaller, cooler people do their thing on a bigger scale and get it to more people and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you grew up in this area, but like, what's your, what's your favorite thing about the area? Oh, Harvey's Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, My family has a place out there. I've been going since I was little. When I'm, when I'm home, um, and not in Philly, I'll stay out there or my parents' house, but mainly out there waking up and looking at the lake is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you you still have the place in Philly? I do. I live in, um, Maniunk part-time and up here part-time. Nice. I love Maniunk, but yeah. I love it up here too. Yeah. I love it up here (laughs) too. It is a cool vibe. I've I've been there a handful of times. Yeah. No, it's super cool. It's super cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's got like a really like, um, tight knit community type absolutely feel absolutely and that's yeah. like what you're trying to bring here exactly yeah no definitely it's you know all these you know different people but they share something and there's somewhere for them to go or a way for all of them to connect easier you know that's i mean that's what sit- big cities do best you know is they they have all these different opportunities to bring people together and create all these communities which you know we have here to an extent but not as you know not as good as it should be we just need people like you to make it happen yeah that's, that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah exactly yeah, totally yeah for sure we're gonna yeah. we're, we're trying our best out here and everybody who we've talked to and everybody we've been reaching out to is all on board with it and everybody's super enthusiastic about it which is you know nothing but awesome yeah i love it yeah for sure i, I love what you're doing and like and and it was really cool to see you uh, and you know move into the the building where you're at because you know like i know like when when axel rad moved I always, I, I thought to myself until let's I saw, yeah, there. yeah, what's let's going, go what's, what's, what's going there? I've Who's heard going that there? Before, yeah, no, there you was probably a, heard that a million times, a hundred times, yeah, yeah, no, for sure, yeah, because I mean, like, like I said, it is an incredible place, you know, all of, all of the little details and everything are super, super cool. It is cool, yeah, yeah that's awesome. It's like a piece of history. Here. Exactly, yeah. I think the building was built in like 1919, 1918, it's something crazy. around then. 100 years old, it's still standing. Yeah. Like I said, we'll, solid. Dude, some of the floorboards are original too, so you'll see the uh the square nails and you know certain things like that and it's awesome. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So what what else are you doing with the space? You mentioned like artwork and furniture too. Yeah, like, absolutely. What else are you doing? So, um Aside from clothes and everything, um, we do furniture. We try and um, bring it back to life without, you know, painting it a completely different color. You know, we'll do super small things to it. And we've just been, you know, Facebook marketplacing it, doing that. Um, We do vinyls. We have a crazy collection of vinyls. Um, We do a lot of cool art with um, artists that are friends with us, you know, local, local people, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. There's a local artist, Lucy Shimo, we're doing a lot of work with, and she's just like spectacular. She's so cool. And all of her work is incredible. So yeah. So like as, as many friends that we could bring together, as many cool creative people that we could bring together to, you know, create this, you know, super cool thing is it's, it's awesome for us. Yeah. So, so like why entrepreneurship for you? Like what, what is it about entrepreneurship that you just, I think it's, I think I look at it like a game sort of, you know, it's like, it's like you're playing Monopoly, but in real life, you know, there's, (laughs) you know, you know, if you you go bankrupt, you know, you can buy Broadway, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fun things that you could do with it. There's so many different paths you could take and there's so many different life experiences and things that I've learned that if I was, you know, doing a desk job, I never would have known, never would have had to experience. I never, you know, it's, it's essentially you know the the whole experience of you know just doing all of it is just so much fun you know i have a blast doing it there's no days where i wake up and i'm like hey i don't want to go into work today you know every day i wake up and i'm like all right what are we going to do today you know yeah yeah it's super fun so so what's a typical day look like for you typical day we get into the warehouse we kind of uh take a look at what's sold overnight what kind of packages we have to ship out um 
so we'll get that done and then we'll start you know picking new items to put on the website and on our ebay and on our depop and we'll kind of you know curate them with you know certain pieces and do certain fun things with them and then you know we'll um you know, we'll just hang out a lot of a lot of the time during the day, and you know, get you got our the work couches done. there. We got the couches. Got we got the TV. TV. Yeah. yeah, we'll throw on some Netflix. Just sit back and get work done on our computers and stuff. So it's a very like relaxed very work chill. environment for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a very chill spot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So now, now can can somebody come there? Like, can people come? So we were thinking about um, at some point doing a store, but for now, we're online only. Um, aside from the events that we do and, you know, certain open houses and things like that. But yeah, no, for, for right now, we're not, um, open to the public on a day to day basis. There may be a a point in the future that we do something like that, whether it's up here in Philly or whatever we decide to do, but at, for the time being, um, strictly online, but we are planning a ton of cool events for the summer. So that's going to be super, super fun. Any, any, uh, can you share any of that now or is this kind of still under wraps? No, definitely. A couple weeks from now, um, we're going to do a sort of open house flea market kind of thing. We're just going to bring in a couple different vendors, maybe, you know, five or six different ones. That's going to be a secret until we, you know, yeah, actually yeah, pick, yeah. you know, pick how we're going to do that. And then, yeah, no, hopefully get some cool food trucks or, you know, some sort of cool, you know, drinks. Um, and basically, like I said, yeah, just create a, you know, a sort of environment where somebody, you know, they could come hang for a couple hours, do some shopping, meet new people, you know, see things in the area that, you know, you typically wouldn't see on, you know, you go up to the mall or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, all right. So kind of back to like, um, the entrepreneurship stuff, like a little bit, yeah, and you, sure. t- you touched on it a little bit earlier, um, you know, of like the, the grind and the hustle of all the stuff that you do behind the scenes and it can kind of be like monotonous and oh absolutely and like so talk about that a little bit like how do you like, yeah base, uh, for sure so how, yeah, how do you manage to do it i mean at, at our um you know what we do is we resell items and for the most part they're recycled items or you know they've been closed that have been sitting in a basement for years so um first off and foremost is we have to you know bring them back to life a lot of times they're you know riddled with stains or there are rips so we'll, you know, take all of our, you know, new inventory, we'll analyze it, see what we have to do with it. Um, you know, a lot of the times they have to do some sort of stain removal or, you know, something like that. So we'll get into that. And then as soon as that's done, you know, we start prepping it to be pictured and, you know, put into our systems and everything. And at, at that point, you know, it gets put on the website or our Depop or eBay or whatnot. And it's uh it's there for the world and you do all this stuff like yourself um along with with, yeah. with with connor and jackie yeah um but yeah no there's you know there's a lot to it you know even you know doing packages one by one putting things into the inventory system because you know most retail stores you know they get a shirt and they get you know 50 of them we have you know a 1980s larry bird t-shirt you know we only have one of them so every item you know is usually a you know a once off in the inventory system so there's a lot of uh you know bookkeeping that you would never realize and <laughs> yeah, wow yeah a lot of things like that um that you know it, it creates a lot of you know extra work obviously but it also helps you you know kind of dissect your company a little bit and find different things that you might just you know you might miss on the surface so um as tedious as it is and as much as i wish i didn't have to do certain things like that getting into you know the nitty-gritty of everything is how you know we figured out a lot of things that we could do better certain items we should carry more of or you know certain sports teams that sell better than other sports teams and you know without that you know we you know there's a hundred people, um, you know, out there who, d- who do what we do. You know, you have to separate, you know, you, we had to figure out different ways that we, you know, differentiate from our uh, competition. Yeah. So like what else like have you learned along the way, you know, as a young business owner, young entrepreneur, like what other, what other things like have you learned or figured out or things that maybe you said, oh, that didn't work? Patience. Patience is definitely because, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get a, a new piece of inventory in and I'll post it and I'll think I'm going to get 100 likes on it and it's going to sell in two seconds and it ends up sitting on the rack for two months. Or, you know, you deal with a customer who wants to return something for some, you know, reason and they're not being super cool, you know. There's all these little things that, you know, it's just, it's, it's definitely frustrating. But as you do them more and more, you start to get, you know, you know, you know, you know how to talk to people to sort of diffuse, you know, an angry customer. Not that we have many of them, but, you know, there are definitely things like that happen or, you know, we'll have issues with the post office losing a package or things like that. 
So dealing with things like that, um, over time, you, you figure out how to do them better and how to figure out, you know, problems better, but you definitely face things that, um, you know, you would never expect or, you know, you would never think about. Also, like with, you know, with the whole entrepreneurship thing, like, you know, you gotta, you know, I know you probably know this, but like, you probably gotta be super lean, you know, to be able to like make ends meet and pay the bills and all that stuff. Like, what was that like for you? Like when you first like went out and started this, like after college? So fortunately, since we were going through college, I really didn't have that period, thankfully. But there's, you know, there's definitely been times where, you know, sales weren't doing too hot and, you know. You know, maybe, maybe I wasn't going, you know, out for, you know, a steak that night, you know, <laughs> yeah. we were going to get a burger yeah. instead sort yeah. of thing. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely, um, there's definitely been a few times where we had to, you know, or I had to, because before we made the move back up from Philly, I ran the company as a sole proprietor. So I brought on a few of my friends as investors. Um, my friend, Asa Sademan, Pierce Jaswinski, Jesse Good. We have um, Connor has um, a piece of the company and then our friend, Sammy Parenti. And, you know, all of us working together, you know, we do, you know, we do some cool work and having all my friends who have these, you know, they each have their own respective cool background and have them giving me advice on certain things and stuff like that has been really cool. Yeah, so you got more people involved in this than I thought. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, no, I tried to surround myself with as many people who could bring things to the table that I might not thrive in, essentially. And it just so happens that I have some incredible friends who are super talented at what they do. And um, they've been super enthusiastic about everything and the counsel and just help and advice that I've gotten from everybody. It's, it's, it's been incredible. And like I said, Connor and Jackie have made this process for me and, you know, getting set up and, you know, getting comfortable in there significantly easier. I w- would never be able to do them without everybody would be able to do this without everybody helping me. Yeah. No chance. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. So going back to like some of the items you said, like, you know, some of like the uh, like the higher ticket items. Like, what's like the craziest thing that you guys have ever sold? Like, oh, that's a good one. Um, I could listen. So right now we have a uh, Pulp Fiction jacket that was given out to the uh, cast and crew. That's a pretty cool one. Um, we had this X Games jacket from like 2000 that there was only like 15 of them, and it was only given to certain athletes. Um, we like a lot of the, uh, mid eighties stuff. So like, you know, Larry Bird stuff, Magic Johnson stuff, things from that era, honestly, any sort of like old sports stuff, old movie stuff, things like that are things that like, we really, really like, um, old car stuff. We love, you know, old Porsche stuff or Mercedes stuff, all of that sort of old promotional gear and like different merchandise that you would be like, why is Mercedes making a sweatshirt? 30 years later, thank God they did because there's some pretty cool sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah, and you're selling them. Yeah, for sure. And we're selling them. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, what else? Like, what, um, you said, you said, like, sports is probably like the, like, they're like the top. Absolutely. Selling. Band t shirts are super, super huge too. Um, anything like having to deal with like a movie or any, honestly, like any sort of brand, all of their stuff is crazy. We're huge fans of, uh, old Nike stuff, old Ralph Lauren stuff old Adidas stuff, all these sorts of things, you know, all these different pieces, they tell it, you know, they tell a story for the most part, you know, they're 30, 25, 40 year old, you know, pieces of clothing. And the fact that, you know, you could still wear them and all these sorts of things that kind of, you know, gives you a sort of connection, you know, with the times before, which is super cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, so what do you got on now? You got, so right now it's a 1980 Lake Placid Olympic shirt, the Miracle on Ice Olympics. Um, huge fan of that Olympics. A couple years ago, we started buying a ton of the stuff. We have a massive, crazy collection of the of Olympic stuff, specifically 1980. We Why? love the 1980 Miracle on Ice. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah no, yeah. absolutely, yep. yeah, no, a lot of and just there was tons of cool stories and little things from that Olympics. So, um, yeah, so we pick certain things like that and just like go crazy and buy tons of stuff for it. Do you know that like there's a market for this stuff like before you you buy and sell it? Um, so a lot of the things that we sell, you sort of. Um, so basically you go into a department store, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they have what you're looking for, right? When you come and like browse our website or you're on like our Depop page or something, a lot of the things, you know, you didn't even know existed. So we find things that we could present in like a cool way, you know, certain things that like for the most part, you know, I think is cool or, you know, the, you know, my buddies or whatever would think were cool. And a lot of the times it's, you know, things that aren't, you know, 
aren't in stores or even, you know, a lot of like vintage stores, you know, there are certain things that we could find in certain genres that, you know, haven't been tapped into yet and things like that. And the 1980 Olympics was one that we definitely saw was, you know, it has tons of cool notoriety behind it. There are awesome stories. The logo is incredible. Yeah. The logo, <laughs> yeah. they killed it that year. And there's just so many cool things. So it's, you know, you go online, you start looking up t-shirts and you're like, hey, that one's only $15. You know, that thing's probably worth 50 or 60 bucks. You know, why is that so cheap? So you buy it, you know, you, you know, you wash it. If there's a stain in it, you get it out and you present it in a way that, you know, shows the customers something that they didn't know that they wanted. And that is, it's a super fun thing. That's interesting. It's, it's yes. a super Say fun again, thing. So it's something that customers didn't know that they wanted. It's something they didn't know that they wanted. You know, you're going into Target for the most part, you know, you know what you're going in there for. You know, they might show you certain things that, you know, you didn't want it, especially Target. But <laughs> yeah. um, no, I mean, because, you know, where else are you going and finding, you know, a 30 year old Pulp Fiction jacket? So it's certain right. things, you know, it's things that people aren't going on online and searching for necessarily. So we have to figure out a way to present it so that they're like, oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I so, want that. So yeah. So when they're on your website and they're and they're they're buying something else, but then but then over here, they're like, oh, what's that? Exactly. Exactly. And when we have people in person, because we'll do in person appointments and like I said, a lot of events and stuff. So when we have people in person shopping, it's for a, a lot of the times it's, oh, my goodness, or I've never seen anything like that before. Or, hey, hey, come here. Come look at this thing. And <laughs> yeah. a lot of that. And yeah. I, and that's 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 what does it for me. I love that. That's that's like my favorite thing. Seeing people see something they've never seen before and being like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, where did you get that? Yeah. And then they end up wearing it out of there. And for the most part, our prices are cheaper than, you know, any department store. And it's something super cool, you know, it's things you, you, you know, you never find. I mean, you could go to a store and, you know, find an Eagles hat like this, you know, tons of them. But this one's from, you know, 1990, 1991. Nobody's ever worn it. It's brand new. You know, it's certain things that you just can't find in stores. And it's things that we love too. you know, an old Eagles hat like that's right. That's that's me. You know, that's that's, yeah. that's perfect. So a lot of what we carry is a reflection of things that I think is cool for sure. Um, but we'll also have certain items that, you know, me, you know, go along with the market and what like other people, um, are looking for and other stores are selling and things of that sort. But for the most part, what we really love to do is find items that other people definitely don't have. And we get to kind of present it in our own way. That's what we really have a good time doing. Yeah. And so, you know, like when you said like this hat is new and it's from like 1990, like how do you, how do you find stuff that old that's brand new? Some guy who owned a store, thankfully never threw out the old box in his basement. He passed away and his kid put them online or something of something like that. There's all these, you know, different things that happen and things fall into your lap and Somebody tells somebody they got to give you a call and tell them about the things they found in their uncle's basement, <laughs> things like and, that. And you show up, right? And we show up as soon as we get, yeah, as soon as we can, for sure. A lot of, you know, even like Facebook marketplaces, place, you know, we'll find like a cool, a cool item and we'll say, hey, do you have anything else? Do you have any friends or family? Yeah, show, me, show, show me your basement. Exactly. And for the most part, you know, as long as you're nice to people and treat people with respect, they'll, they'll help you out. And if we're taking things out of their basement, you know, they, they love that. Too. Yeah, you're doing them a favor. Exactly. Yeah, we're cleaning <laughs> Clear them out. Yeah, yeah cleaning no, out their definitely. attic, their basements. Yeah. And then for the most part, these people, a lot of the people don't realize that what they have is, you know, worth money. You know, they're it's like, valuable. Yeah. My, my, my husband's old NASCAR hats from the 90s that's been in our closet since. What do you mean they're, you know, they're worth something? So we'll go and, you know, we'll we'll set up a buy and you know we'll set up an appointment to you know purchase things from certain um, certain people. And then we end up paying them more than they, you know, they were expecting because yeah, they're probably just ex they were probably just either going to throw them out or just or, or take them to, um, you know, like a Salvation Army. or Exactly. Something, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when we come in, we're like, yeah, we're going to give you 20 bucks for that old hat you have. They're like, wait, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's that is always super, super cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's something we really like doing. That's awesome. So, all right, man. So like what else? Um, how, how can I, how can our listeners connect with you? Connect with you online? Yeah. Basically, you could go on Depop and um, we are at Kingswood on there. Essentially, every platform is a variation of Kingswood. So our website is Kingswood Collection, which is also our Instagram. Depop is just Kingswood. And um, on eBay, we're just Kingswood as well. So we have all of our stuff on our website, um, on our Depop. Um, there's tons of different ways. If you're in the area and reach out to us, you could do an in-person um, appointment. Um, but yeah, no, basically through our Depop and our website are probably the best two ways. 
Cool. Yeah, for and, sure. And, and, and you guys will probably uh, keep people updated on your social media with some of the things you're doing this summer. Yeah, absolutely. As we start getting definite dates and certain things like that for you know events and certain things we want to do, we're gonna we're gonna be blasting them everywhere. Um, we're gonna really try and get as many people to you know come together and you know make these little events or whatever we decide to do, you know, super, super fun and beneficial for everybody. And, you know, hopefully hope or hopefully help a lot of cool, you know, smaller businesses, you know, find new clients and meet new people and things like that. Yeah. No, it's really cool, man. I really appreciate what you're doing, like for the area and for other people. And it's just, it, it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah, definitely. And we're having so much fun doing it. And everybody who's, you know, come over and seen the place and, you know, didn't necessarily know exactly what Kingswood was, it's it's been awesome. Everybody's loved it, and it's it's we're just having such a great time acclimating back into the area. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, this is awesome. I, I um, it, it's so cool what you're doing, and you know, like I said, when I came and I got the, the, the you gave me the tour, like it was just it was cool. Like it was a fun vibe. There was there were some people in there, and it was it was just really neat to exactly. see. Exactly. Like, it was really neat, it was neat to see this from like like ground not ground up but but like the new facility oh absolutely from the ground up. yeah no i mean it's essentially we're starting fresh you know we had to buy all new you know display fixtures and you know tables and everything so basically yeah basically we're, we're ground up um as soon as we moved here and it's been really cool you know piecing everything together and you know finding certain things around different pieces of furniture that we could use for certain things there's a ton of cool places around here you could find things like that and it's it's, it's it just goes along with the treasure hunt we have so much fun doing it <laughs> yeah 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 for sure super cool man well, I, I wish you the best of luck and thank you so much you know, man. i we'll, appreciate it yeah and we'll be seeing each other soon i'm sure absolutely hell yeah thanks for having me man i appreciate it all right man ross kleinman on the stacks podcast in the blue door studio thanks for joining me absolutely thanks for having me man